Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to all of you. It's, wait a minute. It's Father's Day, isn't it? It's June 19th, 2022, and it's Father's Day. You know what's odd about Father's Day? Is that I'm here in church with you. <laughs> with annual conference, and uh, usually we have Sunday mornings as part of our cleanup. Of course, the last couple of years, we haven't been together at all. Um, for Father's Day, um, but uh, this is like the first Sunday in decades <laughs> that I've been able to be in church with all of y'all, and um, so I'm very excited about that, to be here for Father's Day and to celebrate this worship with you. We welcome all of you who are here today with us in person and those who are watching on uh, Zoom or watching the YouTube version of this later in the day or week, um, and uh, so we just uh, welcome you all. We're waiting. There we go. And uh, so obviously, if you're watching from home, as always, we invite you to use your QR code and um, let us know that you're watching by filling out our online attendance form. Um, we have a few announcements. Uh, Midweek Connection. Um, Jennifer doesn't know this because it only happened in the last few days, last few days, last few minutes. And that is that I've decided we're not having Midweek Connection this week. Um, <laughs> the choir and music program are having a big party on Wednesday. And uh, so we're going to do that, because it's like almost everybody who would be on midweek anyway. Um, so we're going to have that. So the next week, it says this on the insert in your bulletin, says it correctly, that on the 29th, a week from Wednesday, we'll, be our, we'll have a sort of final gala uh, midweek connection evening, and then, and then we're taking a break for the summer. So we'll be taking July and August off of midweek. And uh, so the 29th, a week from this Wednesday, um, will be our last midweek connection um, until the till September. All right. Um, this is the the new celebration of uh, Juneteenth, um, and um, so um, I just wanted to take a, a moment. We talked quite a bit this week uh, at our annual conference session um, about um, a lot of about Juneteenth and about um, um, how we are working uh, to overcome racism. Um, in, uh, within our church 
um, within our culture, within our community, and within the world. And uh, so I just wanted to remind you that this is um, now a national holiday, um, and um, it, is a, it is a reminder to us that there is still work to be done. Um, we have a lot of biases, a lot of, um, I keep thinking the word racism, but what I mean is, you know, all the different ways that we discriminate against so many different groups. Um, and um, so it is, an op uh, it is an opportunity for us to, to dedicate some time to remember and to see how we are subconsciously and, and without thinking um, how we are supporting some of those different ways. And um, so time for self-reflection. All right. Um, here are some pictures um, of our annual conference session. This was set up. Um, you can see we're putting lights up and truss up and, and um, all the different things. This is going backwards. <laughs> so <laughs> and uh, so this is, um, the we had a uh, section of the ballroom that was just for our, um, for us, for offices, and for all of our media setup. Keep going. Pretty boring picture. Oh, I don't care about order, just put pictures up. <laughs> so, but this is what the stage looked when we got done with the screens on either side and um, stage in the middle. Joanna did all the lighting um, and she ran camera. There she wow. is. So um, we have a, it's a professional um, video company that does game shows. They do every, every time you see an Apple um, announcement for a new product, they're the ones who go up and do that up in um, San Francisco. So it's a big company. And, um, and they, so they have nice professional equipment that we get to play with. Oh. And then that, that's Don Howell. Um, we've been praying for his wife, um, who has stage four cancer, um, Mary, for, uh, Nancy. And uh, so um, that's a picture of Don. Don and I have been running this thing together for 20 years now which is just crazy that it's been that long. So, All right. Um, is that the end of our announcements? Yeah. Excellent. All right. Then um, are there any other announcements? Um, we, we do have some kids. Uh, you see this camper ships in there. We, we raised a bunch of money um, last year and didn't actually spend it. Um, so we're using that money this year. We're helping uh, some of our kids go to camp. And uh, some of the camps start this coming Monday. And um, I don't think it's one that we have any kids in, um, but they are the camps for, that run all summer long are starting this coming week. So I just wanted to lift up our camping program and uh, all the volunteers, pastors, and, and other uh, lay people throughout our, comp our, our southern district here who will be in Julian over the next several weeks um, um, helping our kids to learn more about God. That's a, a wonderful thing going on. And um, all right, if there are no other announcements, then we remember that God is good all, all the, the time. time. And all the time, God, God is good. good. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join us in our opening gathering song. Just a word of instruction that between the two gathering songs this morning, slightly different than our normal, we're going to do the second one a cappella, and we're going to sing the introduction. So. This is a short little introduction, but you'll see when the words come up on the screen for the second song is when you join us, but we'll still give you a little bit of an intro to the second song.
Some weight, but I think the piano is a little. I think the piano is a little too close to the altar today. Please join with me in our call to worship. Come, let us worship the Lord our God, whose love quenches our thirst. We are, we are parched and, and thirsty, thirsty for God's, God's healing word. Let us praise God, who is with us always. We, we seek, seek the, the one, one who will who not us. desert us. Let us open our hearts to God who calls us by name. We come seeking reconciled relationship with God. Amen. Please remain standing as you're able and join us in Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. Join me in the opening prayer. Open our, our hearts, hearts today, today, O Lord, to feel the powerful strength and love that you have for us. Help, Help us to listen, listen not only with, with our ears, ears but with our, our spirits, spirits, for your words of compassion, compassion and healing. Enable, enable us to become more faithful disciples, disciples for we, we ask, ask this in the name of our Savior, Savior Jesus Christ. Hey. 
nation, every race, come make joyful music to the Lord. Sound the trumpet, sound it clear, sound it for the world to hear, come make joyful music to the Lord. Our scripture lesson today is from the Gospel of Luke, the 8th chapter, verses 26 through 39. Then they arrived at the country of Gerasenes, which is opposite of Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man in the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded that the unclean spirit come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back to the abyss. Now there on the hillside a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine. And the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herders saw what had happened, they ran off and told it to the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. They, then all of the people surrounding the country of, the, of Genesee asked Jesus to leave them. For they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. 
The word of God for the people of God. We begin our scripture today um, with a question. What are you afraid of? Right? What are you afraid of? Maybe I have some suggestions. Um, maybe you're afraid of snakes. Does that make you go, Ugh? Maybe you're afraid of spiders. Maybe you're afraid of falling. <laughs> maybe you're afraid of the ocean or water in general. Maybe you're afraid of dogs. Right? Maybe you're afraid of clowns, because I might be afraid of these clowns, but. <laughs> what is it that you are afraid of? Many of these fears are, are surrounded by fears of, of what? Of dying, right? Or being severely hurt, right? We have that kind of a, that's kind of a natural thing, right? We try not to die. We try not to get severely hurt. And then we think about these things that could hurt us. Um, and so, you know, that whatever the, your phobias might be, um, you know, they, they fall into that category, right? But there's other fears, right? There's other fears aside from fears of being physically hurt or dying, right? There's fear of failure, right? There's fear of disappointing others. There's a fear of disappointing ourselves. There's a fear of being embarrassed. There's all kind of these kind of fears as well, right? That aren't fears of something in the world or a fear of just dying or being hurt severely. Um, but we have these fears of, you know, uh, emotional fears and, and spiritual fears, right? Sometimes we have a fear that, hey, maybe God doesn't exist. Maybe I'm all alone. So some of us have a fear of being alone or fear of being in a crowd or fear of, you know, there are a lot of fears, right? A lot of things that different people fear and affect them in different ways. And you understand, right, the difference between a fear and a phobia, right? A phobia is a fear that causes you, that, that keeps you from interacting normally in the world. So a phobia is something that uh, so greatly affects you that um, it affects how you react in the world. So we all have a, a natural fear of, you know, we don't put our hands on hot stoves, right? We've learned this lesson at some point in our lives. Um, but, you know, that a fear of something and, and understanding it is one thing. A fear that, is, that, that won't allow you to go into kitchens or won't allow you to go within five miles of the ocean, or won't allow you to go out of the door of your house. These fears that alter your routine, alter how you react with the world, those are the real deep phobia fears that we have. Some of you probably would never in a million years want to stand right where I am and have to look out at, at you all and talk, right? We have a fear of public speaking. All kinds of, I, I, have, I have that too, by the way. <laughs> um, okay, so not so much. but um, Right, we have all these different fears. And I, and I thought it would be interesting to look at our scripture today um, and think about what fears are in our scripture. Right, because there are actually quite a few. So they arrived um, at you know, Ger Gerasenus. You know, I, people always come to me and say, how do you pronounce this, Pastor? And I'm like, I have no idea, <laughs> right? And uh, Gerasenes is probably closer to how it's pronounced. Um, and, uh, and as they stepped out on the shore, a man from the city who had demons met him. For a long time, he had not worn clothes. Now, you have to understand one of the first fears is that you are not allowed to see someone naked. Now, you remember in, a, in Jewish culture, they had a whole thing about, um, you know, being kosher being, and remaining clean so that you could worship together and be together with your family. And things that made you unclean, like being sick and, and other things, 
meant that you had to um, isolate yourself for a time and maybe, depending on it, go through a cleansing ritual in order to re return to society and return to the normal activities. Seeing someone naked was one of those things that made you unclean. So it's just one of the rules um, from Leviticus um, that they had to follow. So the first fear people would have is that they would see this guy. And not even if he didn't have demons, but just to see this person out there naked was a fear because if they saw him, they were immediately thought to be unclean and now they had to go back to their ritual, right? So it'd be kind of like this idea of if you're working in a restaurant and you're supposed to have clean hands, we hope, um, that every that you try to keep your hands kind of clean, right? And because um, you know if you get really dirty, you're going to have to go wash your hands again, right? And so it's this kind of basic fear in that, that they know if they see this person, they're going to have to go back and go through a cleansing ritual um, once again. So they try not to see him. That was a fear. And so they feared this guy, not only that, but, it, you know, he was crazy, right? He was, in the sense, he was acting out of normal. And so, do you see in the scripture what they went and did? They bound him with chains. And part of that was to keep him in one place so that people wouldn't see him. People wouldn't become unclean because they saw him if they could keep him bound. But, but that didn't hold. He would always escape and be driven out back into, this, back into the tombs and back out into the water. So that was our first fear. We have the, the town had a fear of this guy, right? And then we learn that these demons that are possessing this guy, they have a fear too. Even the demons have a fear. And we don't really think about that, right? Um, as much as we ever think about demons um, in, in our modern age and modern culture, we don't think about them having a fear. But they did too, right? They were afraid of being returned to the abyss and asked Jesus if they could go into the swine herd and die. And so Jesus allowed them to do that, right? He allowed these demons, which is kind of this weird thing. We don't know about you know, all their different beliefs about demons or, or any of that, so it kind of sounds weird to us, but, but it is an interesting little point there that even the demons had a fear. And we move on down, and it says, you know, that he was kept under guard and had broken away from all this. And they ran down the hill in the, with the, inside the pigs and drowned themselves thus avoiding, I suppose, the abyss. And when the swine herders saw this, saw what had happened, they ran off and told the people in the city, right? And everybody came out to see. Now, how many times have we read about the healings of Jesus and everyone comes out to see, but they come out to also be healed, right? But this, not this time, right? This is a new land and where Jesus hasn't been working and they don't know who this Jesus guy is. And so when they come out and they found this man who had been possessed and who was always naked and now suddenly he's just sitting quietly at Jesus' feet, dressed in normal clothes um, like anybody else. And what is, the scripture says that, you know, that their reaction was to be afraid. They were afraid of this powerful person who had come and managed to make this happen. It says, they became frightened. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then the whole throng of people of the surrounding region of Gerasenes um, asked Jesus to leave them. When they saw what had happened, they were afraid. And so they said, Jesus, leave us. For they were seized with a great fear. Now we're moving towards phobia, right? They were seized with this great 
fear. And so Jesus said, okay. Right? That was kind of the instructions he always gave to his disciples when he sent them out two by two. Right? He says, if you are not welcome, go somewhere else. And so it's interesting to see how Jesus follows his own advice, right? So he came here, he did this healing, and the people said, oh, we're afraid, please leave. We'd rather not have your healing here. And so Jesus says, fine, and he got back into the boat. And then finally in the 38th verse near the end here, it says, the man whom the demons had gone out begged that he might be with them. So that hints that maybe even the man who was healed was afraid, right? He was afraid to be left behind. He was afraid that maybe the people would lock him up again thinking it was not real, that he really was still sick. Or maybe he was afraid that the fear of Jesus would be, you know, they would retaliate against him as well. Not too unreasonable that this man who had been healed would also be afraid. But Jesus told him, no, stay and tell the people about me. And so he did. At that point, are you going to argue with Jesus? <laughs> right? I mean, he just came and he healed you, and so you're going to follow. There are a lot of fears. Do you see that? We kind of missed that in this story. But there are a lot of different fears a lot of different groups, almost every group in here except for Jesus and his disciples are afraid. And of course, we don't hear about the disciples. Maybe they were afraid too. I don't know. But everyone that the scripture talks about was afraid. The people of the town, the, the man, the, the, even the demon, everyone had fears. They feared seeing someone naked. They feared the crazy behavior. They feared change, right? I mean, I think as the people came out of, uh, and saw what had happened and saw that this man who was crazy was now sitting there calmly, you know, that's a big change. And don't we fear change as well, whether it's good or bad? And, of course, xenophobia, this fear of outsiders, they had a fear of Jesus, this outsider who was coming in and disrupting. You know, it may not have been great, but it was what we knew, right? And so, you know, while it changed for the better for this one man, everyone else was like, well, wait a minute, you know, we knew, we understood how this worked. We didn't want change. It reminds me of a sign I saw once at, at a business in the back. I, we were in, in, a, in a, I think, in, I don't know where, but, but a room where only the employees would be. And it said, you know, don't, I can't get the exact word in right, but it was something like, um, you know, don't complain too much about your boss. The next one may be worse. <laughs> I think it was sort of probably put up there as sort of a joke, but right? But, you know, don't complain too much about the way you have it because it could always be worse. I don't know that that's good advice at all, but, but it, made me, it made me laugh and it made me think about that, right? It's that you know, That's how we sort of manipulate people too, right? Is with fear. Because if you know what people are afraid of, you can have quite a bit of control by using that fear. Right? And that's how our whole culture is designed now. And mostly that's about 24-hour news stations and, or just the news in general is all based on fear because they know that that is the, the biggest, easiest, fastest way to manipulate you. And, and the main manipulation, believe it or not, is simply to get you to watch more of their show. Right? It's not really to convince you to, to any kind of call to action to make changes. It's just simply to convince you that you better be back here at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock tomorrow night because we're going to have more to tell you, more things that you need to worry about. 
more things that you need to fear. And that's across the board. And there are a lot of churches that are the same way. There are a lot of churches that their, so their theology is about fear. And in that over history, that has been very true. Right? And our Protestant Reformation was about that in many ways. The Catholic Church of, of Martin Luther's time was very much based on fear. We can argue whether it still is, but we won't have that argument right today. But, right, it was very much based on the fear of going to hell and the fear of, of never seeing your relatives again, of spending eternity, you know, in torture and all of this. And Martin Luther really went back and actually read the scriptures and said, you know, this kind of teaching isn't real. Because at the time, they would allow you to, you could spend money to the church to get your relatives out of purgatory and into heaven. So, so they had this whole tier system at the time. It wasn't just you go to hell. It was you go into this waiting period of purgatory, of nothingness. And... You know, depending on how bad your life was, it's how long you spend in this purgatory. And then, you know, so you could go back and spend money. It was a fundraising. <laughs> it really was. It was a fundraising effort by the church called indulgences. And it was one of the main things that Martin Luther really was stood against, as our Protestant Reformation stood against, was this idea of paying the church in order to secure your everlasting you know, time with God, paying your way into heaven. So the rich went to heaven and the poor not so much. Right? And it's one of the reasons why we, we nowadays, a, a modern theo theologian um, said that um, you know, if it's not good news for the poor, it's not good news. And when we talk about the good news of Jesus Christ, we talk about that's really what the gospel means, God's story, the good news. He said, if it's not good news for the poor, it's not good news. And that certainly was not good news for the poor. But you can see, right, how that's just one example from our history, but you can see how fear is this real you know, source of manipulation of how we can get people to do what we want, give us money or do tasks or whatever. Because when our fears overtake us, we make poor choices, right? When our fears, when whatever phobia we have, you know, we make poor choices. And so we have to really stop and think, you know, what is it that we are afraid of? You know, the people in our story made a pretty poor choice, right? Jesus came, he healed someone. Now, if you think about that from our perspective, from, you know, from outside, what would be the obvious next thing? Let's invite him in because, you know, there's lots of other things that need to be healed. Right? And that happened for Jesus many times. In fact, it happened to where he couldn't get away from the crowds because they were following him everywhere he went. But these people came to this situation. They met Jesus in a situation that brought them fear and anxiety. And so they made a poor choice, right? They said, Jesus, go away. We do not want you here. Fear causes us to make poor choices choices. We fear what we don't know and understand, right? And that was the main fear that these people in the village had for Jesus. This new guy, we don't know him. We don't know what his real motivations are. We don't know what's going on here. We have this fear of the unknown.
And this fear of the unknown, whether it's whatever, it's unknown about how spiders react with this. It's unknown about how that snake is going to react to me. It's unknown how that clown is going to react to me. Right? We have this fear because we don't under because we lack understanding. And these fears control us and lead to poor decision making. We have a fear for our church, right? We have a fear that whether we have 20 in worship or we have 60 in worship or we have 100 in worship, we will always have this fear of are we big enough? Or are we small enough? Are we growing? Or are we not growing? We have this fear about our church and our, we have this fear about our faith, right? We want to know and understand and be connected to God, but we, we want God to do most of that work, right? We come and we pray often, God, show me a sign. Let's walk outside and see a big burning bush, right? Let's hear this big rumbling voice from heaven saying, here, this is my, belo- this is my child in whom I am well pleased. We want to hear that voice, right? We want to see that sign. We want to know. We want the, we don't like this unknown. We don't like this ambiguity. We want to have clarity. But we can't let the fear of the unknown, we can't let our fear of ambiguity, we can't let that control us. We have to look around and see the good. We have to take time to see and be grateful for the blessings that are happening in our lives. Because the fears, the challenges, the troubles, they will always be with us. right? There will always be things in our lives for us to be afraid of and to worry about and to be anxious about. But if we don't want them to control us, we have to focus on the things that we are grateful for. We have to look and open our eyes and see the blessing that God is bestowing all around us. If we look at the world and expect to see a world that is broken and damaged and falling apart and and hopeless, that is what we will see. If we look out to the world and expect to see God's blessings, to expect to see acts of kindness, to expect to see love, we will see it. And that's how fear manipulates us, right? When we are afraid, then we expect to see fearful things. When we trust in God, then we will begin to expect to see God's work in the world around us. When we trust that God is with us and and around us and in the world, we will begin to see God around us and God working in the world. Now, turning on the news may not be the best way to do that. You may have to find other ways to see and to look at the world so that you can see it more clearly, so that you can see all the things there are to be grateful for. And there are so many, right? We're grateful now that Tim is back with us today, right? After three weeks of listening to these terrible music pieces that are (laughs) recordings and trying to sing to them, even this last week when Tim actually played them, um, it was still hard to do that, right? And so we've learned to be grateful. You know, we just took it for granted, right? And now with a little, a couple of weeks of absence, we've learned to be grateful to have a live pianist in our church and to have that music. I'm grateful for those of you who are here today. I'm grateful that you are all here and a part of this church. I'm grateful that I made it after getting home at 11 o'clock last night. 
and that I'm able to spend Father's Day here at the church and to celebrate this Sunday with all of you. There are so many things to be grateful for. And we can either let the fear of what we don't know, the fear of the unknown control us, or we can let gratitude lead us. We can let our trust in God lead us. We can let the love of God lead us. It's a choice that we each have to make. Will it be fear or will it be trust and love? Amen? Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join us in our song of response, Wounded World That Cries for Healing. We have come now to our time of sharing our joys and concerns, and I have here a, a fair list of those. Um, uh, Martha and Russell have asked uh, prayers and lifted up for us. Um, Mark Mattis, um, a former member of our church uh, and a close family friend of, um, of theirs, um, as his wife, Diane, who was battling cancer, has passed away this morning. And uh, so if you knew uh, Mar the Mattises, um, please lift up Mark um, and the family in your prayers on the passing of Diane. So for those who knew Diane Mattis, we say, Lord, in your mercy. mercy. Um, Adelaide um, requested prayers for both of them since they are both feeling under the weather this morning. Um, that's on top of Adelaide's usual health concerns and those that they were here last week, which was a joy and a blessing, um, but they are not feeling well this week, and uh, so we're not here with us. So we lift up Adelaide um, as well as Bernie in our prayers this morning. We say, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. They also request prayers for Monique, 
uh, a friend of theirs um, because of stress um, regarding her son. So, um, so for Monique and her son and the family, um, we say, Lord, in your mercy. Um, Judy uh, Sullivan um, requested prayers as she fell um, and is currently in the hospital. That was her message to me. I picked up the message on the way home uh, last night in the car. Um, uh, so uh, she called yesterday. So we want to lift up Judy and our prayers this morning. And, uh, so for her, we say, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. She did make the actual call to me, so... Um, we're hoping that she'll she'll do well. Um, Georgine, um, I heard uh, that she fell again this week, um, but didn't go to the hospital. Um, but um, I think that's it's been a few times now that she's fallen, so we want to uh, lift her up in prayers for sure. So for Georgine, we say, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And uh, Jim and Louise um, are requesting prayers for Jim. Um, as the doctors have told him that his cancer has returned. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, they are going in for a biopsy on Tuesday, right? So um, we will lift you up this week in prayers um, for that test, um, as well as the results that will come sometime after that. So, so just prayers for Jim, for Louise, as, as she takes care of him, and uh, for, for good results from these tests. For Jim, uh, we say, Lord, in your mercy. Hear us, Lord. And, um, of course, prayers are requested for Lori, um, who we have mentioned has also has uh, a mass and uh, that may be cancerous. Um, it's on the right side of her chest wall where her previous breast cancer had been. Um, so prayers for peace and uh, are appreciated while she moves through a big process of uh, many needed tests. Um, so just prayers for her and for the whole family. It's good to have you with us today, Russell, in the church. Um, so prayers for Lori and for the family. We say, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And uh, Jennifer and I request uh, continued prayers for Joanna, who is recovering. She's walking around with a cane um, at this point, which is a big step up from two crutches and barely being able to move. So um, uh, she did, if you didn't hear, she dislocated her kneecap a, a week or two ago now um, on the second, and her uh, physical therapy appointment is on Tuesday. And her next orthopedic doctor appointment is on June 28th. That was the earliest we could get an appointment. Um, so that's where we'll find out the results of the MRI we had. So we'll see if there's more work that has to be done or if she'll just be healing from strained muscles. Um, so, so prayers for her as she continues to struggle a little bit with movement. Uh, but you saw her up there in the chair uh, on a platform. Um, I watched her through another camera climbing on that platform. And I just like <laughs> didn't <laughs> trying to get up there to get in that chair and sit at the camera. But um, so just prayers for Joanna through this time. We say, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Are there any um, other? Um, per concerns that Kathy yes. um, this is a joy oh a joy um, I have a brand new baby grandson who was born on Monday Tucker oh, Thomas yay. Tucker Thomas all right so congratulations for the new grandbaby from for Kathy and uh, for Tom it's Carly and Tim the parents, it's Carly so. okay yeah yeah you didn't yeah you did it's fine. <laughs> but it's yours yes I understand how it works all right very good so uh, so a praise for for them and uh, for the baby and for the boy. And so um, we say, in times of joy, Here there are prayers. prayers. Nice. You missed some on top. I missed some on top. Oh, yes, I did. I went right by that somehow. Um, so April, if you saw on the prayer chain, um, she requested prayers for a couple of things. Uh, prayers for Paisley, that's uh, April's great niece who had surgery on this past Friday, just a couple days ago, and had a smaller procedure done that fixed the kidney problems she was experiencing. Um, so Paisley turned seven in July, so um, prayers for quick healing are appreciated. So prayers for her uh, great niece, um, Paisley. 
who is going through an awful lot for a six-year-old. So for her, we say, Lord, in your mercy. And um, also, if you didn't catch it, um, prayers um, for April herself. She went out and was picking strawberries um, and then um, um, needed, uh, the next morning woke up with back pain and um, so with pretty severe back pain. And uh, so it needs prayers for pain relief and easier moving of her joints. Um, so um, we just pray for her, the in, whatever, however she managed to injure herself while picking strawberries. Um, so uh, prayers for healing for, for April herself. We say, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Anyone? Yes, Carol. Uh, I just oh. pray for Vilma. We've been praying for Vilma. Uh, um, she is cancer free at this moment. So oh, Yay. nice. Yay. All right. And a prayer for concern. That's my, her husband, my baby brother, always a baby brother. Um, he has a low white blood count, so he has uh, some more tests to pursue. But we're, we're joyful. Yay. Yeah. Yeah, being cancer free, that's a really yeah. cool thing. So for Vilma, who we have lifted up many times in prayer um, over the last so many months, um, for joy for her in this healing and um, being cancer free, we say in times of joy, your prayers. and then prayers of healing for her husband, your brother, baby brother. Um, and so for her, for him, we say, Lord, in your mercy, your All right. did I see another? Yes, Harry. So your friend's name was? Shirley. Shirley. So prayers for Shirley, uh, who is body is having trouble making platelets, platelets and uh, who will be going in to have her spleen removed. There's hopefully a solution to that. So for her, we say, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And then prayers for your daughter, Jennifer, um, in this time that she's back in the hospital. Um, so just prayers for her, for, for healing and for comfort. Lord, in your mercy. I do have, and I just remembered as Carol was lifting up her concerns, um, that um, we had got a letter back from one of our scholarship recipients. And uh, it was such a nice letter that I thought I would read it to you. It's addressed to um, Carol, um, but it's for the whole church. It says, Dear Miss Spencer, I cannot thank you enough for selecting me as the recipient of the Ramona United Methodist Church Scholarship. I most gratefully accept it. Your kindness and generosity are so touching, and I promise to use it wisely and thankfully for the best purposes towards my education. I am so excited to begin my college career at Grossmont Community College, and I have such amazing plans for my education and beyond. I know that I will make you and all of Ramona UMC proud. I would be honored to attend a potluck this summer. I may be reached at phone number uh, by email, so very cool. Oh, All right. Any other prayer concerns or joys? Just continued prayers for Ukraine. Okay, so prayers for Ukraine, and definitely they are. It's sort of fallen off of our news coverage a little bit, right? But for the people who live there, it is still a very real, very painful, very destructive. Um, a very difficult time for them. So um, for the people of Ukraine and all people around the world who are in the midst of conflicts, we say, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And uh, we had several people, well, I mean, we have 1,200 who are supposed to be there, so it would seem to that we would have some, but we did have some prominent uh, pastors and whatnot who were not able to attend annual conference this year because of being positive with COVID. So we understand that that is still going on and still very much a part of, of, of our world today. So 
for all of those who are recovering or uh, who are healing from COVID, for the doctors and nurses uh, who are caring for them. We say, Lord, in your mercy, Let us lift um, these joys and uh, concerns as we join together in prayer. Gracious and loving God, be present with us here today. Help to alleviate all of our fears. Fill us with your presence that our fears may be vanquished, replaced by your love, your care, and your concern. May we feel closer and closer to you each and every day. May your love surround us Keep and hold us and guide us out into the world. Help us to share your light and your love with the people of this world who are hurting, with those who are like us and maybe more so living gripped in fear. Help those who are sick and those who are injured, those who are spiritually and physically hungry. We especially lift up to you those whom we've mentioned here in worship this morning. Be present with them. Hold them close to your side that they may feel your warmth, your comfort, and care. And guide us that we may be a, a vessel of your presence to them. That through our interactions, they may feel your spirit. Help us to be your hands and your feet in all that we do. Help us to remember that this is our calling as your disciples. Help us to remember that even when we feel distant, even when we feel afraid, that you are always with us. Help us to remember all of these things as we remember the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come now to our time of celebrating our gifts, of remembering the blessings that we have received, and remembering the ways that we have been a blessing to those around us. May we encourage one another and be encouraged by God's presence and spirit to be a blessing to those around us. May we be encouraged to share all of the gifts that we have, all of the gifts that we have been given with those who are in need. We remember that that is our calling as disciples. And we sing praise for the gifts that we have received and for the ways and opportunities that God sets before us to use those gifts. We praise that and celebrate that by standing together and joining together in our doxology, our hymn of praise. <laughs>
Please join with me in our offering prayer. Be zealous in shouting your praises to the Lord, remembering the strength of God's love and the promise of Christ's help. Let us share who we are as the church in the world. With open arms, let us join with one another as we express our faith through our gifts of love. Amen. Please remain standing as you're able and join us in singing, Oh Jesus, I have promised. We leave this place, not in fear, but in joy, with God's light shining on the path before us, with Jesus beside us as a guide and friend, and the power of the Holy Spirit working within us, always and everywhere, giving us strength and courage and hope to go forth each and every day.